guys, Brian from Old Game Review. I uh, want to welcome you back to the gas station. Um, just uh, got a great new camera. Um, wish I had made this purchase earlier. This is awesome, awesome camera. I, they're going to review the, uh, the Contax G1. I've had a lot of requests for this camera. Always been interested in it. Never, you know, picked one up, but finally uh, actually got one. And like I said, I wish I had, I had bought this a lot earlier. Um, what is, <laughs> yeah, uh, very impressive uh, camera to say the least. Um, there, there's two versions of the camera. There's Contax G1 and the Contax G2. I opted for the less expensive uh, G1. Um, and these cameras can be had uh, uh, pretty cheap uh, or less expensively, let's put it that way. Uh, the, uh, the camera bodies themselves, on the G1, you can get very inexpensively. The lenses um, are still very reasonably priced uh, and uh, the, the pricing is, is well below, I think, their value in comparison to the market. Um, definitely uh, way up there in, in quality. Probably one of, This is probably one of the best lenses I've ever actually uh, used. Um, the camera is awesome. Again, I've had a lot of requests for, for reviews on this, and finally we get to do it. But uh, I guess the highlight of this camera, I would say, would be the, uh, the Zeiss uh, glass that goes with these cameras. Um, the, the, the Zeiss, this is the Planar uh, 2. Uh, F2 uh, 45 millimeter lens uh, and it has the Zeiss T coating on it and it is just it, I, I can't say anything bad about this at all it's just spectacular to be honest um, the camera itself um, you can find a lot of information about these cameras all over the web but what I am going to tell you is is I think actually I probably shouldn't say this but um, I think this is probably one of the best deals out there right now I, th I think you know if you want to get Rangefinder, rangefinder quality and get like just like the best quality camera you can get, uh, you know, uh, and still shooting film. I, I don't think you can go wrong with this. And I frankly, I don't even want to do a great review on the G1 because I think I'm I'm, I'm scared that it'll drive up the prices. This this thing is what a bargain, uh, really. Uh, I mean, there, it's not a perfect camera, but um, you know, and the criticisms of the camera I think are there is truth to them, but I, I wouldn't wouldn't put too much weight in it. Uh, the, the autofocusing they say is very slow on this. It, it's not the fastest autofocus in the world. It's, 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 it's very acceptable it's, as far as like just, you know, pretty much anything out there, certainly faster than manual focus. I, I think it's, the, the G2 definitely appears to be better, but wow, this is not, it's not bad at all. Um, you know, pretty much, it's, it's relatively quick. It's really not that bad. Um, anyway, let me go through some of the features of the camera, and then we'll go back to sort of my evaluation of it. All right, so first of all, Contax G1 is a rangefinder camera. The rangefinder, um, it's not a rangefinder as you would uh, talk about in, like, let's say, a Leica, uh, where it's the, uh, the split image uh, that you line up for focusing. It's completely out of focus. You can't see the actual focusing happening through the viewfinder, but it does it via electronics, via a rangefinder, so it does... Uh, it actually does have the uh, the coincident windows and all that stuff, so it is technically really is a rangefinder. It's not like the uh, the Fuji X Pro One digital camera, which is not a uh, rangefinder whatsoever. It's a rangefinder style. This actually is a rangefinder. Um, it's very small. Uh, it's titanium uh, skin on the body, and underneath is a, is a, some sort of metal or steel. I'm assuming it's a, some magnesium or, or something like that. Um, but it's it's definitely got some heft to it. It's it's heavier than its looks, you know, make, make it look. I mean, it's, you look at this camera, you think it's going to be light. It's actually pretty substantial. Um, controls, uh, basically you have two options for controls. It's either, you know, uh, aperture priority or full manual. There's no shutter priority mode on it. So uh, you're going to be, you know, if you can handle one of those two, I think you'll be okay. And most people usually shoot, you know, in manual or, uh, or aperture priority, but you know, shooting. If you want to change your shutter speed, you know, you can go ahead and do that. Just you just you need to know a little bit about cameras. It's uh, not a completely full auto camera uh, at all. Um, you'll need to understand, you know, what what aperture you're going to want to put it at, and that and how that relates to shutter speed, etc. So uh, you, there is some knowledge that it's required to use this camera. Um, it is a DX film camera, 35 millimeter. Um, Controls are on it are, are laid out pretty nicely, to be totally honest. Um, right here, if you have it in the auto mode or aperture priority mode, uh, it's going to give you exposure compensation on this dial right here. And it actually, it moves pretty nicely and it 
there's like sort of a little extra heavy detent when you put it in sort of the full auto mode. Uh, but you can use the exposure compensation here. If you want to switch to full manual, you would have to uh, put it towards the end of your uh, exposure compensation pull, push the, uh, the button in the middle, and then you can change your, your shutter speed and it reads up to uh, uh, one two thousandths of a second. Um, bulb and flash sync. I don't remember what the flash sync is on it, but uh, um, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. I don't I don't recall. So uh, you can look that up on the web elsewhere. I don't use a lot of flash, so it's it's not something that I'm uh, spending a lot of time with. Um, there is let's see. We'll put it back into our auto mode here. There is um, a manual focus feature to this camera. Um, I don't really recommend it. Um, you know, if you, you can use it for zone focusing, although they don't give you any sort of depth of field scale on the camera, so that's going to be sort of difficult to do. But if you're doing, you know, focus at infinity, like if you're taking, you know, pictures at a long distance or whatever, and you're, uh, you, you want to focus on the sky or clouds or something like that, it doesn't focus that well on that stuff. So you, I've used it to just set it to focus at infinity um, and then use it from there. But the, the dial is sort of very easily moved um, and if you just kind of like casually brush up against it the the autofocus uh, or the manual focus dial will move so i don't recommend necessarily using that um, <clears throat> see what else do we have here power switch is right here it's right it's, uh, it's right around the uh, the shutter button uh, shutter button you half press to focus and then fully press to uh, to take your picture and then there is an exposure lock here so if i were to say let's say focus over here and then i want to lock my exposure yeah, oh, sorry. So I would press, I would half press here, and then uh, that would lock my exposure. So then I can recompose. It'll it'll lock that exposure in there, and then I can focus um, on something else, but keep that same exposure. So that exposure lock is good. Uh, some of the stuff you're going to have to get used to, and like any camera, um, you're going to sort of have to sit down and play with it and shoot it a lot, and what I call bond with your camera. So you need to understand how it works and uh, sort of use the features around it. Um, let me see, the uh, aperture uh, ring is right around the lens here, going uh, from f2 to f16. Very nice detents on this lens. Uh, it, it moves smooth enough uh, so you know, you're not wrestling with it, and it's uh, uh, stiff enough so that it's not going to just kind of like turn out of place and, and change your, uh, your settings. Um, there's not going to be no problem with that. Um, hot shoe here, there is um, two flashes for it, I, and uh, there's one, one is a smaller one, I think that they call it the, the 140, and then there's another one which is I think the 200, I can't remember what the prefix is for it. Um, but you know, there's two TTL uh, flashes available for this camera. Diopter adjustment for those of us who wear glasses, and then there are some uh, special programming modes and stuff like that. There's a drive mode where you can get single shot. So you press, you focus, take a shot, that takes one shot, and then you hit drive, and you can go to in continuous mode, and that's up to four frames a second, I believe. Um, and uh, yeah, and then there's a self timer and a multiple exposure mode. Uh, so you have some options with that. You can also do uh, uh, set your ISO manually, although it is a DX camera, so it'll automatically read the exposure settings on your film. Uh, you can set it manually if you wanted to. Um, auto, uh, auto, certainly auto feed, so it'll like automatically wind the film, and then an automatic rewind. Once you're done with the film, it'll rewind. Uh, there are some custom programming options in this where you can set it to, you know, to leave the leader out and stuff like that. So if you want to change film mid-roll, sort of keep an eye on, uh, you know, what exposure you were at. You were at. You can actually. Um, uh, rewind the film and leave the, the leader out so you can take it out, put it back in, and then uh, use it over again, uh, which is kind of a nice feature and not an option found on a lot of cameras. Um, and there is a uh, the manual rewind uh, button is right there. You'd have to find something small to stick in there, like a you know a paper clip or something like that. Tripod socket on the bottom. Um, the finish is, uh, is, again, like the exterior of the camera is, is all titanium, which is really nice. It's got a nice feel to it. I think it has a nice look to it. There is a black version of the camera, uh, although it is uh, quite a bit more money. Uh, actually, it's, there's no black version of the G1. Of the G2, there's a black version. I'm sorry. So, um, but uh, the black version is going to command a lot more, a lot more money. Uh, on the side here, PC Sync, and then on the back, this is, I believe, for a remote shutter release, but it's a proprietary one to the camera, um, so you're gonna, uh, it's not just a standard uh, push button 
uh, shutter releaser. You can, if you want to find that, I have. A, I don't know how easy that is uh, to come by, but uh, but it is there. So uh, there's a number of accessories for the camera. Um, also, there is a number of lenses for the camera. This is there's a 28 millimeter 35, which actually doesn't work on this one. There's two versions of the G1. The G1 there's I think a silver label version and a green label version. Uh, some of that has to do with software upgrades and stuff like that. This is the silver version. I don't I didn't see the need to go with the green label because uh, there are three lenses that I want to use for this are the 28, the 45, and then the 90. Uh, there's a this one can only use the 35 millimeter lens I think if you have the green label and. Um, and there's a, I think the zoom, you can't use the zoom lens on this one. Um, and I don't know if you can do it on a green label either. But the G2 can use all of the lenses. But I didn't, you know, for everything I was reading, I didn't really need all the features of the G2. It does focus a little bit faster, uh, higher frames per second. Uh, I think it goes up to six frames per second uh, shooting film. I'm not an action guy. I don't know. It, you really need to sort of like figure out what what it is your need is for the camera. Um, if you're if you're on a budget, you want to get unbelievable quality lenses, uh, and uh, you basically you need the basic basic lenses would be the 28, the 45, and the 90. Go with the G1. Save yourself a ton of money. Um, the G1 is is you know really very very cheap. I've seen the G1 on KEH body only for about a hundred bucks. Uh, 120 or somewhere around there so uh, I'm not quoting prices but I'm just telling you they're, they're out there and then the lenses seem to be around in the neighborhood of uh, three to four hundred dollars uh, for the 45 the 45 uh, this lens here has sort of been the star of the show I guess for uh, uh, contacts it, it really is spectacularly sharp unbelievably sharp great contrast I mean certainly as good as any Leica glass or Zeiss uh, other Zeiss glass that I've seen for for the M bodies um, so if you're looking for like an M quality, um, like an M6 or something like that, uh, for, the qu for the quality of the photographs, uh, I, you needn't go any further, I think, than the, than the G1, especially if you're uh, on a limited budget. Um, you know, so, you know, for the, for the price of a G1, uh, let's say the 28, the 45, and the 90, you're looking at probably, let's say, $400. Uh, you can actually get the 90 even, but let's say uh, four eight. Let's say $1,000 in lenses plus $100 for the body. So you can get three lenses, or it's probably going to be a tiny bit more than that, but I figure that's a good ballpark. So you're going to have three lens kit and the camera uh, for, for about the same that you would pay for just an M6 body. Um, I'm really having a hard time justifying buying an M6 or anything else like that, uh, certainly on a budget, when you look at the features of this. Granted, the, the rangefinder feel, uh, of the Leica is definitely superior. It's definitely a more solid feeling camera. Um, and uh, the, fo the manual focusing is nice on the Leica, but if you're looking for, if you're looking purely as image quality, I don't think you're gonna go wrong with this. And especially uh, uh, at this budget, yeah, this is, a, a, I think, almost a no-brainer. You're not losing anything image quality wise by going with this camera. I, I, can, I can tell you that much. Just take, you know, take a look for yourself. Go on to flickriver.com, uh, look up uh, Contacts uh, G1 or 2, and look up the, uh, the Zeiss Planar uh, F2 45mm lens or any of the Contacts G lenses, and you're going to see just spectacular images uh, all the way around. So, I don't know, I'm, I, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm kind of excited about this camera. Um, it really is awesome. It feels great in the hand. It's a little bit small for me, tiny bit small, but honestly, it's just easy to carry around. It's not a big camera. You can bring this camera anywhere and get spectacular photographs out of it. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm really impressed, and like I said, I, I, I can't say any more good stuff about it. Um, Again, there's more information on the web about this camera if you want to check it out. My this, my videos here are more about impressions, and I'm very impressed with this camera. Uh, it really is just spectacular. Oh, again, some more features. Uh, the uh, film counter right here is right here, uh, LCD. Oh, that's another thing. When you're shopping for these cameras, they, apparently they have, do have some problems with the LCDs, and they have problems with some bleeding uh, on the LCD, So, um, which means that the... Uh, liquid crystal display is broken or something and then uh, the liquid actually kind of pours out into the into where you look and it turns like black um, so keep an eye out on that uh, the cameras are you know were extremely expensive when new 
Uh, so, you know, they were owned by a lot of people who uh, had a lot of money and probably didn't use them much. So there's a, a whole glut of them on the market and they're generally in pretty good shape. Um, so find yourself a good one. Don't, you know, don't rush to find the first one that you see. Um, you know, check on eBay, check on KEH. I, I think KEH is sort of a good resource. They have a six month warranty on their cameras. Uh, I bought mine uh, via Craigslist, um, got a great deal on it. Um, met a nice guy, you know, we've had a, you know, talked about cameras for a long time. So that's kind of fun. So if you like to, uh, you know, I like to buy stuff off Craigslist, you know, and uh, you get to talk to people and always uh, meet somebody new. So, but uh, yeah, so the Contax G1, Zeiss lenses, unbelievable image quality. I, I'm going to give this camera like two huge thumbs up, 10 out of 10. Um, I won't say a 10 out of 10. That's not really true. Two thumbs up. Um, if I, were, if I were to rank this, I'd probably do a 7 out of 10 just because the, it is kind of limited as far as like what can be used, what can't be used, different lenses and stuff like that. So you don't have like complete transparency with the contacts uh, where you can't use all the lenses that came out for the G series, uh, certainly on the G1. As far as the G2 is concerned with uh, the upgraded focusing and stuff like that, yeah, if you need that and you need some speed and stuff like that, definitely go for the G2, but you're going to probably be spending in the neighborhood of $500 plus or minus. Uh, on a G2 body, and the G1 body again, it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a, a you know 100 to I'd say up to probably $200 um, for you know good usable body. So anyway, I don't know. I think I've covered most of everything here. Um, like I said, kind of excited about the camera. Highly recommend it. Definitely worth getting. Uh, if you want rangefinder and you want like a quality on a budget. There's no better option, I think, in the market, in my opinion, is Contax G1. Um, any focusing issues that people have had, I think they just haven't necessarily spent the time to learn the camera. I had one out of focus shot on probably six rolls that I've processed so far, and uh, one or two actually out of focus, and they were both my fault. Uh, no fault of the camera. So, um, yeah, I, I'm really, really very happy. Anyway, that's it. Brian. The gas station, uh, Contax G1, highly recommend it, enjoy. Thanks guys, uh, more reviews coming.